Calaroga Shark Media. Hi, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news thunderstorm edition. I was sitting outside writing the show and it started to pour and the inner letterman in me said, let's do a thunderstorm edition. And look at that. The rain is letting up just as I begin to record. Let's start on Gossip Corner. John Mulaney and Olivia Munn flaunting their love, says the New York Post. You may recall last week there were some rumors that perhaps, possibly, maybe they had gotten married. They were seen holding hands as they made their way through the arrivals terminal at JFK Airport. Neither Munn nor Mulaney appear to be wearing rings, though. We're told Mulaney looked dashing in a dark jacket layered over a black button-down shirt, pants, and moccasins. Olivia Munn was wearing an oversized black overcoat with a gray top and light-washed jeans. When Mulaney recently did his late-night show, apparently the set was inspired by Johnny Carson's Malibu home. Mulaney tells Vanity Fair, I wasn't going for an off-putting aesthetic or anything. The set was actually modeled after Johnny Carson's house in Malibu. A lot of brutalist gold things plus grapes. Glass grapes are wonderful. I knew I didn't want a shiny black floor. I knew I didn't want anything chrome. I didn't want anything to look like late night or reality shows as they do now. Jim Norton has a new album out. It is called Gender Reveal Disaster. He caught up with the LA Times. It is a profile of Jim and wife Nikki. How did you guys meet? Nikki said, I was 19 years old living in Norway. I had my first apartment. I started speaking to this American online named Jim. I saw a video of him on YouTube and I didn't know he was a comedian because he was talking more seriously. I looked him up and wrote to him. I think he also saw me online, so I guess he liked what he saw. Norton said, I was delighted. She sent me a message because I did this interview where I talked about trans women. I've talked about it so many times and occasionally get messages, so we talked briefly. I looked her up and saw she was doing cam stuff, so we started talking more. And around two months later, I was like, why don't you come visit? That's when she got rejected for a very minor marijuana charge. Nikki says, I thought I'd have no problem getting in the States. I brought all my papers. And the guy goes, you're a convicted criminal. You need a waiver for this. A waiver was a nightmare because you have to overcome all these things. It started a really crazy process for us, Jim said. It was insane. She never even got caught with drugs. It was literally a text message that was read at the police station. It also made it much harder to prove that it was a small amount because it was never an actual amount. Because of that, it was seven months before we met, which is a lot of talking and FaceTiming. Bill Burr had always told me to go overseas and that they'd love me, but I would never do it. I finally did it to meet her. So I knew I liked her. After the first weekend in Norway, I knew I really liked her. Nikki says, yeah, he came to Norway. We hit it off really well. Three days after that, I went to Amsterdam with him. Jim was the first man to take me out in public. The LA Times was like, wait, is being openly trans in Norway not allowed? Nikki said, it's allowed, but I feel like it's a good country to be trans in. But I do feel that Norway, although very liberal, is a little bit more conservative for my parents. It was definitely weird. It's way weirder there than it is here in America. I have exes in my life, but being in Norway, I was never asked out in public. I had always felt hidden away. Jim changed that whole world for me. The rain is letting up, by the way, which is good because I'm kind of trapped out here. TMZ had someone at the Stormy Daniels comedy show. Apparently, Stormy joked on a whole bunch of different topics from her porn career to her political allegiance. And despite her issues with the former president, Stormy says she's still a Republican. Oh yeah, she talked about him too, reportedly calling him tiny, while also touching on her financial woes, including the $600,000 a judge ordered her to pay Trump. Following the defamation lawsuit, she claims her lawyer filed without her consent. I think I guessed right about something. My memory's foggy. The National Comedy Center has announced that Nate Bergazzi will headline the Lucille Ball Comedy Festival. He joins Jeff Ross and Nicole Byer. They're already performing. I feel like I did a story where they hadn't announced the headliner, and I just felt vibes that it was going to be Nate. I didn't know anything, but all right. guess my spidey sense still works. Oh, man, it just got like 85 times as humid. Still raining, and there's thunder in the distance, but boy, it is sticky out here. Tickets for Nate's show at the National Comedy Center go on sale Tuesday. Go to ComedyCenter.org. I was actually up that way over the weekend. Didn't pop into Jamestown, but it was up in the Niagara area. Very, very nice. Jimmy Kimmel, uh, he's taking his annual summer vacation. Martin Short will sit in tonight as the host. The rest of the week is Meryl Streep tomorrow. Selena Gomez Wednesday. Melissa McCarthy on Thursday. That sounds like a lot of work for the producers. Can we at least get one person a week? I don't know if you saw this, uh, Martin Short as his character Jiminy Glick, which I have no interest in, uh, sat in for Bill Maher and in character as Glick interviewed Bill Maher on Bill Maher's own show. Danny Jealous announced he will film his third special at the world-famous Roxy Theater on September 14th. Both shows are 7 and 9.30. As with these past specials, there's a large concept at the heart of this one. It remains a secret for now. The general theme of the hour is marriage and evolving as a humor over time. 
Previously, for an example, he did six parts, which saw Danny deliver his first hour over six nights at six unique venues, including a gym, a barbershop, a surf shop, an art gallery, a recording studio, and a comedy club. Uh, for some reason, they're making Spaceballs 2. Josh Gad and Mel Brooks are producing. It's Mel's birthday this week. I know that because he's one of the topics on five daily trivia questions, a whole day of Mel Brooks trivia. Five daily trivia questions where if you get your shows, uh-oh, the rain's picking up again. Plot details for Spaceballs 2 have not been shared. This can't possibly be a good idea, right? Remember History of the World Part 2 came out last year and none of us cared? Did this? Don't do this. Josh Gad had posted on Instagram, just handed in a film script that I think may be the funniest and best thing I've ever worked on, and I'm so freaking excited. Ian Carmel is getting a lot of headlines. He has a new book, T-Shirt Swim Club, stories from being fat in a world of thin people. The cover of the book is a kid at the beach. Carmel said he was inspired to use that image because he thought that anyone who was a fat kid would know that feeling. He said, when you go to the pool and all of a sudden your big fat body's hanging out there and you're like, okay, I know how I'll fix that. I'll put on a t-shirt, which immediately gets wet and clings to every curve of your torso. It's a very silly act of desperation by children. During his eight years working with Corden on the Late Late Show, he reached his peak weight of 420 pounds. My blood pressure was 200 over 100 and something, and I was really unhealthy. When a doctor comes in and says very seriously, you could die from this. That's the kind of blood pressure where you could have a heart attack or stroke. Those are very realistic things that can happen. The idea of having to lose 200 pounds, well, that's like saying, oh, hey, why don't you build a rocket ship and climb to the top of Mount Everest? He did not do things like Ozempic. He lost weight the old-fashioned way. He says he prepares meals in advance, weighs himself regularly to check his progress, and engages in his frequent hot girl walks, a phrase coined on TikTok to describe a stroll. However, had Ozempic been available at the time, he said, 100% would have tried it. When I was 420 pounds, I would have been wearing an Ozempic half shirt, drinking out of an Ozempic water bottle, rollerblade around Hollywood advertising. I would have been the poster child. Our entire society is built around simultaneously punishing fat people and trying to make people as fat as possible at the same time. It's easier to get a cheeseburger than it is to get a salad. Yeah, dude, I love chopped salads. They're like $16. And then the world is cruel to the person who eats the cheeseburger, so it's effed. He has a message you'd like to tell his younger self. Go about your life and find the people who love you for who you are. Some people are going to bully you. And most of the other people really aren't thinking about you at all. Good advice from Ian Carmel. And that is your daily comedy news thunderstorm edition. Is it summer? Yes, it is. If you skip the weekend, uh, both episodes were an interview with Mike Chisholm. He is the host of the Letterman podcast. We nerded out about Letterman both days. And uh, that's it. I'm trapped out here in the rain. I'd have to get soaked to get back in the house. I'm going to continue to sit here under the umbrella. And I guess I'll let up the show and schedule it. See ya.